What's up, resellers? I'm Rebecca, and you're watching Rebecca the Reseller. Thanks for joining me today for a What's Sold on Poshmark video. I am so excited to bring you all the things that are selling in my Poshmark closet. And this week, my ASP completely rocked. I have lots of great things to share with you, some really nice sales. But if it's your first time here, thanks so much for joining me. Hi, I'm Rebecca. I'm a semi full time reseller. I sell on Poshmark and Thread Up, and my channel is all about reselling, how to increase your Poshmark sales, Poshmark tips and tricks and of course videos like this what sold on Poshmark so welcome hope you'll subscribe and hang out again be sure to check out the description down below before you head out today that's where I keep all of my recommendations discount codes and all sorts of things that I recommend so I hope you'll check it out before you leave as I said the ASP rocked this week stay tuned for it I will definitely be sharing all of these things with you but I had 11 sales over $35 this week which made it a great week now there were some sales that didn't do so great and I may share a few Few of those with you but this week I really want to highlight some of the better ones because I feel like that's kind of the theme for this week so good ASP 11 sales over $35 stay tuned till the end for the two sales that were the best of the week something sold for $85 and something else sold for $178 so stay tuned till the end to find out what this week I had over $1,096 in sales so broke over the thousand dollar mark and was very happy to have done that let's get started with a quick sales summary last week if you remember I had a little graphic and I definitely want to do that again but this week I didn't make it and I also have to figure out the background of my computer because you kind of saw like half of my dog <laughs> so I'm gonna fix it and then I will bring those graphics back let's go ahead and do the sales summary at this point so as far as active number of listings I had 720 active listings basically this week I listed 60 items which is bad 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 because I should have listed 70 items and I had one day where I only got to list one item and I just want to quickly say I do talk about making listing a non-negotiable and for me usually it is usually 70 listings a week 10 listings a day, non-negotiable. I don't even remember what happened that day and why I only got one up, but the point I wanted to make is that I got one up. I didn't go a day without listing. There's always a listing going up. So if there is an issue where I'm on vacation, things like that, that's a separate story altogether. But if it's just regular life and things got busy, no matter what, <laughs> I will at least get up one listing that day. And that's what happened that one day. So I did mostly the right amount. And then I just had one day that was off. And I don't even remember what happened that day. Like I must have, I don't even know. As far as the total value listed, I listed $3,931 in value. And as far as what I sold, I sold 33 sales. Again, remember, I'm not doing items. It's how many sales I had. So I had 33 sales, which did include some bundles. The total value of those sales, as I said earlier, was $1,096. And that brought my ASP, drum roll, to $33.21. What? Now, I will say that that is really due to that probably one item <laughs> that sold for $178 and the fact that I had several sales over $35. So this maybe would be a typical week for me going forward. I don't know. Who knows? That would be wonderful. But so far, it's not usually a typical week. I just had a lot of higher value items sell this week. I'll take it. Yay. So that was great. And then for the boutique report, I sold $244 in my Poshmark boutique, which is down. If you recall the last few weeks, it's been about half of my weekly sales and this week it's about one fifth now that's okay I don't have a particular benchmark for where I need my boutique sales to be it has been running at about half and now it's dropped down a bit and I think that's because I am increasing my thrifted inventory and I'm not so much increasing my boutique inventory I'm replenishing things that are selling out but I'm not adding a lot of new SKUs right now I'm really focused on the thrifted side and then I will head back and turn more attention to my boutique side so the boutique is just kind of running in the background and bringing in sales all the time without any additional work which is awesome and the work that I'm focused on is building up the thrifted inventory just so you kind of have a little bit of a perspective on that. Now let's go ahead and check out the sales for this week. Okay, so here we are with the sales for the week. As you know, I usually kind of pull up and do a quick overview and then I have several sales that I will be going through. And again, be sure to stay till the end so you can find out what sold for $85 and what sold for $178. And they were single sales, it was not a bundle. Okay, so we're doing January 30th through February 5th. And as you can see, I do have several boutique items that sold, 
but they were lower value items. In general, my boutique items are of lower value. So I think what's going to end up happening is that my ASP may not go up too much, even though I'm selling a lot of higher ASP items on the thrifted side, because my boutique items are relatively inexpensive. They're jewelry items and hair accessories and things like that. A lot of them. There's still swim and other things that are higher value, but many of them are on the lower end, but that is fine with me. So first up, wow, this was a great sale. Ellen Tracy cashmere wool gray loungewear set. So it is a set of cashmere. Yes, you guys know. I love it. I sold a lot of cashmere this week as usual, but it is like a nice, you know, kind of kimono robe. I don't know what you want to call it. Cardigan and then the lounge pants as well. Oh my God. I wanted it for myself. I think what was the size on this? Yeah, it was a 1X, so it was too big for me. But if this were my size, it would be very tempting to just lounge around in cashmere. Anyway, I had this up for, I don't remember the original price that I had it up for, but it sold for an offer of $70. Next up is Jay McLaughlin. This was a great Jay McLaughlin sale, I will say. Jay McLaughlin faux suede animal print dress. I haven't had a really good Jay McLaughlin sale like this in quite some time. I have many pieces of Jay McLaughlin, simple dresses, basic jersey knit type things up for $50. But this I put up for more and I got an offer of $60 and I took it. And when I took it, I was like, yes, <laughs> like that is why I love this brand and I love it for Poshmark. It does well for me on Poshmark. Next is this Aritzia Wilfred. I think it's Wilfred Free Rebel Vegan leather leggings and so they're just simple vegan leather leggings simple faux leather leggings those always do well and they sold on an offer for $33 yes please this I was surprised about. So I don't do a lot of Banana Republic. I have recently found that it's actually not too hard to find the stock photos for Banana Republic on some items. I was like, oh, well, let me see if I can, you know, find the stock photo for this and put it in and see what happens. It sold the same day. Now, I do think that was luck of the draw. I think I listed it in the morning and it sold mid morning and it just happened to be that way. I don't, I wouldn't say everyone run out and buy all the Banana Republic because you could get yourself into trouble because I definitely have some items that sit. But over the last few weeks, I have put a few select pieces of Banana Republic in and they have sold and they haven't been like the newer label or anything. I think the newer tag is like a big square black tag if I'm not mistaken and it's not like they were even the most recent of pieces but I think it's just a certain kind of piece. Some were new with tags. This one wasn't. But so don't completely count out some of these kinds of brands because you never know. I had this up for 25. They sent me an offer for 18. Within a few hours I snagged it like yes, yes, yes. That was a great and quick sale. Next up is this Sheeran Guild 100% linen oversized top. So boxy, minimalist, oversized, lag and look. These were the kinds of keywords I included for this piece. I obviously don't know if any of those were the ones that worked or not, but the more at bats you can have by including good keywords, the better. You need help with keywords. Always check out my Etsy store because I do have my keywords list there. This was a great sale, $35 on an offer for this. It is a higher end piece. I don't know all of the luxury and all of the designers and where they all rank amongst each other. I just know when it's a higher end piece, I know when I kind of look things up or if I did have it on ThreadUp, the kind of retail value that they assigned it. And then as I'm putting those pieces perhaps on Poshmark, I'm kind of making judgments from there. I think I had this up for $100 and they sent me an offer for $35. That sounds like maybe it would be considered you know, low ball, it's less than 50%, but I send out 50% offers often. And to me, for my buy cost of between three and $4, having a $35 sale is okay. And so I'm not worried if somebody's trying to buy it from me and then sell it for more somewhere else. I'm not worried that I got suckered by somebody and they sent me a low ball offer and I took it. If I'm making the profit that I'm okay with making that I feel good about, I'm okay with that. I don't get too crazy about having gotten every single dollar squeezed out of every item. Now, maybe that will change. Maybe I'll evolve on that. But for right now, I like having a lot of sales. I like things selling. I like things moving. I like getting my investment back, even if it's a small one, and getting my profit and running. <laughs> so for me, I still was really good about this. Now, along those lines, I did mention this particular item in my live stream where I talked about paying up this past week. And so it was Thursday the 11th, if you wanna go check it out and you haven't, that video was all about paying up and kind of the things that I think about when paying up. And so I did pay up for this item at a buy, sell, trade store. It was like 20 or $25 and I had it up for way higher. I think I had it up for $150. It's a new with tags Cole Haan jacket. It's a $350 jacket. So I figured when I bought it, 
at 20 or 25 bucks, whatever it was, I'll make at least that, if not double that, because I want to be selling it for like a hundred because it's a $350 jacket. Like that was the thinking going into it. But once it's listed, now I get an offer. I got an offer for something. Then I countered at 65. I put this on Instagram, the exact back and forth. She declined the 65. We might have had one more inter between that, but she declined the 65. And I sat and I kind of thought about it and I went back to her or she, okay, sorry. I, so she had made an offer. I forget what it was. I countered with 65. She countered with 50. I countered back with 65 that that was going to be my lowest. That way after everything, I felt like I was at least doubling my money. And so it was a good, you know, I would be okay with that. And she declined it. So I lost out on the sale completely because I was quibbling over like eight or $10. And so I thought, well, I could wait and see if I get another offer on on this or if somebody just buys it outright that's very possible it could happen it's only been listed a few weeks maybe that will happen but maybe not <laughs> maybe not and maybe I'd be sitting on this coat for another six months or whatever and so I thought I have $25 potentially invested in this I could get that plus $15 of profit now let me message her and see if she will remake the offer if I take the $50. And I sent her a message and she did. She remade the offer and I took the $50. So I earned $40 in earnings. I paid, let's say $20, $25. So I got 15 or $20 profit and I recouped my initial large investment. And so at the end of the day, I was like, well, maybe I could have gotten more, but maybe not. And I made my investment back and I made my profit and I'm okay with that. And sometimes you have to decide what's right for you. But for me, I think I wanna just get my money back, get my profit and move on to the next thing because you don't know if that buyer that you're waiting for will come around. Next up is this bucket hat. <laughs> so I have talked about these, but I'm like so on these hats right now between these hats. I just sold a bundle of hats this morning. Then I have the wide rim hat. These are all on my boutique. If you need a hat, come to my boutique. <laughs> if you don't, that's okay. And if you want to get into Poshmark boutique, maybe you should add some hats because I had no idea that they were such a big thing, but this sold for $20 and I was happy with it. Next up is this not your daughter's jeans, red skinny ankle jeans, size 10. I've talked about NYDJ before. It's one of those tried and true. You get the right sizes. If they're high waisted, this one's cool because they were red. And so that was something that stood out. It wasn't just, you know, any not your daughter's jeans and they were size 10, which really is kind of the lowest size that I will include in my store. For me, anything less than that, it's kind of a harder sell. So I feel like 10 and up on NYDJ is good and $25 were for these were just fine. They were pre-owned. Next up is Eileen Fisher. It's a sleeveless silk tank top, but it's size small. And that's why I brought this up. Obviously it has a high retail value. Obviously Eileen Fisher is a great seller. It's still a great seller for me. I have lots of it and it just keeps selling. I only got $20 for this silk top, but I'm okay with that. It's a size small. And I feel like on the smaller sizes of this particular brand, it doesn't do as well. And so I do prefer the larger sizes, but I'll still sell a size small silk Eileen Fisher top for $20 all day long and say thank you so much. Then I have my Ann Taylor 100% cashmere cream tan sweater for $25. So many of my cashmere items go up for $50 and then often I do run a 50% off sale. So I have to know in the back of my mind, I need to be okay with whatever items I price at 50 for them to potentially sell for 25 on those 50% off sale days. I do think because I get a range of cashmere. Some are branded, some are unbranded, and then everything in between. I may start increasing the value slightly of my cashmere that has a name brand to it to maybe 60 or $75, just so when that 50% offer goes down, it's still in the 30-ish dollar range rather than the $25 range, because I'd like to be getting a little bit more for my cashmere. And I find often that a lot of people like the cashmere items, and when I do run that 50% off sale, many people buy them. Like that's a lot of times when they sell. So I may be increasing that price point just to kind of cover myself a little bit and squeeze a little bit more money out of them. If it affects sales, I may go back to what I've been doing, but I do think I may bump that up a little bit and see how it goes. Lululemon Athletica pale pink scuba hoodie. I cannot find a stock photo for this one. I look for a couple of minutes. If I can't find it, I move on. This actually had a couple flaws, not anything too big, but just like a couple little dots and little discolorations on the sleeve. And it's still sold for $37. Next up is a Lord & Taylor 100% cashmere cowl neck sweater in black. And again, 50 $50, 50% offer, 
$25 it sold for, that's fine with me. But again, just loving selling the cashmere. So here I have a few thrown in boutique purchases, especially in a bundle, but this one I wanted to bring up because I tried something new. So I have the bracelet, I have a necklace, which you guys have seen before. And then I have, what is it? Look at it. What is it? It's an egg slicer. <laughs> In one of my vendors for boutique, they have other things. And I thought, let me just go poke around and see what I can find. <laughs> I found this egg slicer and I'm like, you know what? Why not? It's a very inexpensive buy cost. It's a handy dandy kitchen gadget. If nobody buys it, I could always use an egg slicer, though I have one. And I'm like, why not? So I bought three of them. I have them listed in my Poshmark closet under home goods. And this person purchased the egg slicer. <laughs> to boutique jewelry items. Now I will say that the quality on this is totally doable, but it's not outstanding. And so I don't know if I would continue down the road of this. I have to think on it and see. We'll see how the other two sell. I've only sold one so far. We'll see if the other two sell because I don't wanna sell things that aren't good quality. But at the same time, I also recognize everybody's definition of quality is different versus the price they're paying. It's all relative. Like someone might be like, I need an egg slicer. This does the trick. I don't really care. I don't need one from Williams Sonoma. While those are out there, as I quickly did research on egg slicers to even see what to price it at. So it's just kind of funny because you just never know. Like you might think, I never want to venture into Poshmark Boutique or I never want to venture into Home Goods, but you never know what is going to be bought with what. And if you don't, don't have them available, you won't ever capitalize on those sales. We just found out that Poshmark is, you know, has launched the pet market or I don't know if it's a market or category or whatever. And I'm like, oh my God, I want a pet store. <laughs> like I would love to just sell all the little doggy costumes and everything. And I talked about this on the live this week and it's like, maybe I'll start adding that to my closet. I don't know that I would add it to this closet. For me, I feel kind of weird about having pet stuff in with the other things because I don't want people to feel like all the other things have like pet stuff all over them. So I kind of feel a little odd about that. In my mind, I feel like it maybe should be a separate store, but this is along the lines of, you never know what people are looking for. She's like, I need an egg slicer. I need a pearl necklace. Why not add the bracelet in? Okay, fine, call it a day. So what are you gonna do? I just thought that that was a fun sale. So if you guys remember last week's what sold, I couldn't pronounce this. And so what did I do? I looked up how to pronounce it. So it's, look, Fakunab. So it's French. I looked on their website. And I didn't do this the last time. I just kind of said it was like Falconable, Fakunable, whatever. So it's Fakunab. Facu oh wait, let's play it. I don't know if you can hear it and see it, but let's play it again. Fakunab. Fakunab. So it's, so it's kind of, it made me think, I'm like, oh, duh, I should know that. So in French, which I don't really know, like Les Miserables, the play, it ends with like the BLE or whatever. Maybe it has an S at the end. So I was like, oh, now that I hear that Fakunab, that makes sense. So again, I don't really know French, but I thought that was cool. So now we know this Fakunab blue mini skirt <laughs> sold for $12. I had it up for 25. It sold on a 50% offer for 12 fine with me. I did take a look at the prices on the website when I went to it and some of the things were in the 60 range, some of the things were in the 100 range. So it's not like it's this crazy expensive brand. So I felt okay that I hadn't underpriced these items, but in case you want to hear it again, Fakunab. Fakunab. So there we go. <laughs> That's fun. We should do that all the time with brands. I wonder if I wonder if because it's a French word, it's on there and if you just like looked up how to pronounce a clothing brand may not come up because it's not a real word. I don't know how it would depend, I guess, on the brand. Interesting information. Another boutique bundle, three pair of earrings. It is the rose gold black feather earrings, these geo drop dangle earrings in gold, and then these triangle dangle drop earrings in green. It's kind of like a stone. So I just bring this up again. I kind of usually always have one of these a week where I do run a promotion where if the person bundles three jewelry items from the boutique, I would send them an offer for $35 and free shipping. And for me, having that ongoing promotion always gives me something to send out to people, especially when they're bundling things or especially when they've maybe liked a few things but haven't bundled it or whatever. I have this promotion ongoing. Now I do it in relation to my boutique items, but you could certainly take that idea and do it for your regular items, whether you run a three for 30 sale or you know a four for 20, five for 25, lots of people have those going. But then there's also other things that you can do. Maybe a bundled jeans with an accessory 
accessory and you get a discount or you get free shipping on you know this or think about it there's lots of different promotions that you could run that you can make a little graphic for I think I have here let me show you so here uh, on my rack everyday savings all three jewelry or what am I saying all jewelry items three for 35 with free shipping just bundle three items and accept my offer so that is something that you can do whenever you want next up is this bundle of two thrifted items new with tags j crew gold sequin herringbone slip dress and then an athleta corduroy mini skirt in purple and that athleta skirt is one of those that i got from the swap.com order so if you guys have been following along you'll know that i did a big swap.com order of athleisure at the beginning of the year and pretty much like almost everything is selling so i'm actually i should see i i know i still have a couple of pieces from it i ordered a lot but i feel like it's more than 50 percent sold through at this point so those are really good timing, paying up for something specifically at the right time, feeling pretty good about the brand, etc. So that worked out well. So those, it was a hundred dollars. We did an offer of 60 with no shipping discount. So I was fine with that. This one is a bundle of an Eileen Fisher pull on pants and then the boho feather necklace. So that's a nice boutique thrifted combo. And that was an offer of $56 with free ship. Last one before the two really big sales. Bloomingdale's 100% cashmere sweater jeweled at the neckline and that was from again Bloomingdale's and that was a $35 sale so that was great because it wasn't on a 50% offer so I am making a good profit on that. Drum roll drum roll the next set of the there's two more items that are the high value item. Okay so here we are one of the great sales of the week is this Johnny Was white embroidered linen top size extra large. Look how beautiful it is. It was a really 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 nice piece and I actually don't typically find Johnny was this was only my second time finding it here locally and I found it at a buy sell trade store and I paid I'm so bad I this was pre my paying up system and so I did not record what I paid for it because I thought I was going to remember who was I kidding so I paid anywhere from no more than twenty dollars <laughs> Let's just say that because it was like in the teens. It was 13, it was 18, it was 15, it was something like that. It's what I paid for it. I had it listed, I think for over $100. And she sent me an offer for 85 and I took it and I'm so glad I did. It's a great, beautiful top. It is now with its new owner and I am $85 better off and super happy about that. Why don't I have anything else in my description here? That is so weird. Usually I have a whole template that goes in there. I have no idea what was going on there. That's odd. Every once in a while, I make a snafu, that's for sure. And here is the big sale of the week. $178 for this Rachel Zoe plaid houndstooth pants suit brown. So it was really cool that I was able to find this stock photo of Rachel Zoe actually in it. I'm sure that helped. But then you actually have, is that her? I think that's her. Then I had this stock photo that I was able to find and that made it a little bit better. But I think that my photo looks actually pretty good. I mean, you can clearly get an idea. I thought it looked really good, but of course I found a stock photo so I couldn't resist and I put it on there. I had it up for 250. It's apparently 650 when I kind of looked at, it was a blogger favorite. I saw it on somebody's blog. It was sold at Bloomingdale's and I had it here. The jacket is 375 and the pants were two. 275 so it's a you know her stuff is pretty pricey and getting 178 for it I was just like wow when I saw that offer came in I don't think I could have hit the button fast enough and then I was like said to my husband like I just sold something for 178 dollars yes so man guys that is what it's all about right these don't happen all the time they don't happen every day or at least they don't happen that often for me but when they do they are amazing and I hope that you are like me where you are always on the lookout for racking up these kinds of home run items and pieces so that you have more chances to get them. You know, if your closet is full of $20 items, you have zero chance of getting a $178 sale. But if your closet is full of 20% $20 items and 80% these kinds of sales, then you'll have more of these kinds of sales. And I'm always trying to fill my store with these kinds of items. So hopefully all of these random tidbits that I provide were helpful to you. Thanks so much for sharing this time with me. I hope you enjoyed this What Sold on Poshmark video. I would love to know what has been selling well for you or how your sales have been going or anything else you want to tell me down in the comments below. Leave me a comment and say hi. I always say hi back. Subscribe if you haven't already so we can hang out again like the video on the way out and don't forget to check out that description down below and maybe watch the next video thanks and i'll see you the next time bye